In this video, I'll show you how we can use Make to manage cascading deletes within NAC. This video does presume some previous experience of building and setting up your schema inside NAC, but to illustrate the point, I've created a very simple application with some projects, and inside each project, it has documents and notes. In the schema, we have three tables. We have the primary table, which is projects, and this has a project name, a description, start date, end date. I'm counting how many documents and notes there are. And then I have a field, a simple multi-choice field, which is indicating whether this is marked for deletion or not. And the default is set to no. So every new record or every new project that gets added, its default is no. And then have a, a text field for reason deleted, which we'll come to later. So my documents are obviously related to the project and this is connected. So I have three in project A, oh, sorry, four in project A, two to project B and two to project C. And then I have some notes as well connected to project A, B and C. And what I want to do is if someone deletes a project, I want it to delete the related items. Now, ordinarily, I tend not to give people a hard delete function in NAC and use a an archive or soft delete process where people can restore them. And I'll, I'll put a link uh, to the video uh, for that. But in this particular case, I do want to give someone the ability to delete the project, but I don't want to leave orphan records such as the documents and the notes. I also want to delete those as well. Now, currently you could add a simple delete button. And if I click on delete, this will delete the project, but that would leave the documents and notes still in the system not connected to anything. It doesn't actually cause a major issue, but it's good practice to clean up the child records as well. So instead, what I have is an update page or an edit page, and I put the reason for delete field into here. So someone would need to give a reason, and when they provide a reason and then submit, it will remove the project from this view by changing the yes, no field to yes, it is now marked for deletion, and move it into this section here which shows projects that are set to delete. And from here, if I needed to, I could restore this. If not, the project listed below and the related notes and documents will be deleted at 8 a.m. each Sunday or on Sunday. In this case, I'm going to simply restore it to show you that you can roll that back. And if I go back to my projects, you can see I've reinstated the project. So just running through how this works at fairly quickly, the uh, projects table is set with a data source to only show records where marked for delete is set to no. And then the page here marked for deletion takes me to a new page with an almost identical version of the projects table on, but the data source is set to show only those records marked as yes. I then have a very simple action link here, which is the restore. And it has one rule, which is to update the record and change marked for deletion back to no and to clear the reason deleted field. So it resets. Just running you through the scenario, what this is doing is it's going to search for any records where the project is set to yes, it's going to be deleted. It looks up that project and then it routes it to uh, look for related documents, related notes, and then finally deletes the project. So what we're going to do for this video is run through how to set up this scenario. If you already have a make account, then just sign in. Um, what I've done for this one is actually sign up for a brand new account. So walk you through from the beginning. So I'm signed up and the first thing I want to do is open up the scenario builder. And now I'm inside a new scenario. I'm going to click on the icon in the middle. And this gives me a long list of all the different applications that Make can connect with. At the bottom, there's a search for applications and I'm going to search for NAC. And I click on the NAC option. And then there's various options here for triggers, actions and searches. And what we're going to look at today is searching for records. The first thing I need to do is create a connection to my database. I'm just going to leave the connection name as my NAC connection. And I need to pick up my application ID and API key from NAC. So go to settings, API and code, and you'll find your API ID, application ID and key here. Paste those in and click on save and make will connect to your NAC application. So we're now connected and we then have a list of our objects here. So projects, documents, and notes. 
So this first module, what we want to do is actually search for projects. So I'm going to select projects. And just to get this working and started, I'm just going to, first of all, look for any project where marked for deleted is no. I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to just click run once. You can see we get a one in a little bubble here, which means we've got some data and we've got a bundle here. So this is uh, project A. And if I collapse this down, it will show you the other bundles. This is project B and project C. So three projects where the delete is set to no. You can see my three projects are all set to no. Moving over into the live app, I'm now going to delete or mark for deletion project A and submit. And that moves it out of this table, changes the uh, record into the section for mark for deletion. So I could restore it from here, but now record project A is marked as ready for delete. If I come back to the table, I can see that mark for delete is now yes, and this is my reason. So back in make, I'm going to click on the module and change this from looking for no to looking for yes. I'm gonna leave it as a limit of 100. Um, in this case, it's unlikely to be 100 projects per month that are getting cancelled or deleted. So I'm going to run that again and I get a result come through here and I've just got one bundle and the bundle is called uh, project name is project A. Now, if you're not aware, NAC uses a 24 digit alphanumeric uh, key or record ID for each record. Now the record ID, sorry, let me close that down. The record ID isn't exposed within the builder. You can see here we've got record ID, project name, project description. But in the table, you don't ever see the record ID. But this particular one ends in um, 6B4. If I go into the builder, you can see I've got my project name, but no record ID. But inside the uh, live app, if I click onto project A, your ID is exposed here. So this is the record ID for this uh, project. And it's important to understand that the record ID is how records are connected with inside NAC. What we are looking for is always a record ID rather than an auto increment field or a project name. So what we need to do now is we found our first record, which is marked as yes. Um, I now want to look for uh, documents that are also connected to that same record ID, that project and notes. So I've got two different uh, avenues to go down. And to do that, I can add on the flow control, I can add a router. So I can add my router and I'm gonna let it snap and connect here and then click on the middle to put my routes in. And then I'm gonna click on the first one and add my NAC module back in and search again. I'm gonna search using the same NAC connection. I'm gonna search in the documents object. And I'm gonna be looking for documents that are connected to the initial record ID. So my filter is to look for projects and click on this little drop down where the project is. And when you click in the blank space here, you'll get all the fields from the first module. When I hover over these fields, you can see that the first module here is, is pulsating. So I just move over these records, the pulsates to show that which module these fields are coming from. So what we want to do is look for documents that have the record ID coming from the project. So I can just click and put that in. And once again, I'm going to leave the limit at 100 documents, but you can increase that to whatever number you wish. So I'm going to say OK on that. Um, and then I'm going to uh, rename this. I don't want every module just called NAC and save that. And then I'm going to clone this to save me doing all those steps again and connect that clone to the router and then delete this other one. And then you can click on the little magic wand to auto align this scenario. So I have my documents at the top. And I'm going to rename this one to notes and then click on the module because obviously this is a clone of the above and I need to change the object it's looking in from the documents object to the notes object. But it's going to be looking for exactly the same um, record ID based on it looking at the project. In, in the notes table, there's two fields, the connection to the project and the note itself. So I need to make sure that it's finding the connected project using the record ID from the first module. And once again, just leave that 100. 
So at the moment, all this is doing is, is searching for things. So I'm just going to uh, run this and see what we find. So I've got outputs on all of these and I've got various bundles. I've got bundle one. And if I come down to where bundle one ends, you can see that I've got total number of bundles is four. And the bundle position of this one is position number one. So there's four bundles here. I don't need to click and close all of these down. But in this case, just to illustrate, there are four bundles. And if I open up the first one, this one is called specifications and this one is called terms of business. So I've got four documents and I then also found um, three bundles of notes. So bundle one, two and three. So back into the builder and I'm on the documents table, you can see my four projects here for project A. Uh, these are the documents. So one specifications in terms of business and these are the other ones. So there's my four and in the notes I have project A, I have three notes. So that works uh, as expected. So back to make what I need to do now is actually delete these documents and delete these notes. So on this first module here for the documents, it actually received four bundles. So it will loop through those four bundles and on the next module we put in, which I'm going to add here by clicking the plus, I'm going to add a delete record. And all we need to do is reference the previous module and it will cycle through them and delete the uh, every bundle. So I use the NAC connection. I need to make sure that I'm actually looking at the documents table. And the record ID I'm using is the record ID from the documents. So you can see here where this one's called search for documents. And when I hover over it, it's uh, pulsating. And if I come down a bit further, this was my first one, which was actually the uh, initial searching for the project. So what I need to use is the record ID of the specific document, not anything to do with the project anymore. This is the record ID for the particular line item. So if I put that in and save that. And I'm going to rename this to um, delete. I'm then going to clone this. Rename. And then update the actual module itself because this was a copy of the documents one. So I need to change it to be uh, notes because this is the notes route. And the record ID, it's gone kind of an outline because it's uh, it's coming from the wrong wrong route. So I need to pick the record ID from the notes that it found. So it's, as you can see, it's pulsating again. So I click on the record ID there. And I'm just going to auto align everything, make it a bit easier. So this will run through, find the project and then find associated documents and delete them and then come down and do the notes. What I need to also then do is actually delete the project. So I'm going to add another route and um, this is going to be a simple delete. So I can delete a record and it's going to delete the project. So it's coming from the projects table and it's going to be the record ID from this initial first module. So if I hover over record ID, you can see that pulse in. So it's the right record ID. Add that in, I'm going to rename. It's going to auto align. And before I run this, one thing to consider is if a project is marked for deletion, uh, it will obviously be picked up on this first module and then it will come through the route and go up here to search for related documents. If there aren't any documents or notes, you need to have a method of handling a, a null value. Otherwise it will pass through a null value from this module to this one to delete documents and there aren't any, so the scenario will actually fail. So to handle that, it's very simple. In between the two modules, you can add a filter. So I click on here, and I'm just gonna give it a label saying that it needs to be greater than zero bundles. And we know in this case, this one actually had four bundles, um, but I'm just gonna put a condition on here. And these are all the fields from this module, because the module is pulsating. And I can see at the top, it says total number of bundles. So that's the field I want to target. So if the total number of bundles is higher than, and if you scroll down, there's lots of different operators. So I need the numeric operator, which is greater than. So if it's greater than zero, it will get past that filter. 
If it's not greater than zero, this filter will trap it and it will stop. It won't fall over, it will just stop. And then I'm gonna do the same on the search for notes. So a label, I'm just gonna say greater than zero and the total number of bundles greater than zero. I don't need to do anything on this route, which is going down to delete the project because obviously it will only work if there is a project um, passed through on this first module. So that will be fine. So I'm just going to realign those. Um, and before I run this um, in a live environment, one thing I do like to do is just put on what's called a, an error handler for a, a break. So if there is any issue with any um, disconnects or in, slight outages on, uh, on internet connectivity, this will store uh, the data that's been received and then um, pass it back and try again. So I'm just going to put it onto the module for deletion. Um, tends to be issues where either records are being updated, records being created or records being deleted. Um, so I've connected it to this module first of all, and I've got a little error on here for two things. First of all, I just need to set up the module and it asks me um, how many attempts it would uh, I would like to use. So I'm just gonna go with three and then how often, and I change this down to one minute. So what this is going to do, if for any reason this scenario runs and it finds some notes and it tries to go through to the module to, to delete them, if anything goes wrong, it will pass it through to this error handler and uh, try again three times, one minute apart. Uh, what I do need to do is uh, enable the ability for make to store uh, incomplete executions. So where it says allow storing, just say yes, and make will store any data that gets passed through to here. If it didn't work correctly, it will store it in this break error handler and pass it back to here um, several times before it sends you any email saying a scenario failed. So it's a good practice just in case anything um, untoward happens and I'm going to um, copy that module and paste and connect it to the same on the documents and auto align everything. And just hit a save. And before I run it, I want to give my scenario a proper name. So I'm just going to delete this and rename my first module. Naming the modules I find is very important and also very useful when you come back to look at this in the in the future. So I'm just going to save this now and then go back to my scenarios. And you can now see that uh, I've only have one scenario on my list, but it's the Cascade Deletes one. Um, it's currently switched off. I'm going to go into that and I'm going to run this for the project that we've moved into uh, the deleted section. So my projects, I've got mark for deletion is project A. So I've not tested this, uh, this is gonna be a, a live. So I'm going to run this once and hopefully it will work okay. You can see it's gone along the top route, along the middle route, it's deleted four, three, and one. So it has a four in the top here, a three in here, and this one. So I'm anticipating that if I go into the builder and look at my projects table, I've project A has gone all the documents for project A have gone and all the notes have gone. If I go back to my live app and go to projects, no project there, mark for deletion, it's also gone. So that was obviously running it manually. So the last thing I need to do is actually put this onto a schedule. And you can see here, I have the ability to click on this little clock on the first one. And I can either run it at various different um, uh, opportunities or different times. But here I want to run it on a specific uh, days of the week. So I'm gonna say days of the week and I'm gonna go for Sunday and I'm gonna change this to 8 a.m. which matches the instruction on my NAC app. So that's now set and all I need to do is come down to the bottom left hand side and toggle that on. Um, give it one more save, I'm slightly paranoid so I like to click save again. And that's it, I can go back to um, my scenarios. So click on scenarios. And you can see now that I've got my Cascade Delete Projects scenario switched on on a timer, and that will run at eight o'clock every Saturday. So any projects that are deleted 
get moved into that section, into the marked for deletion section, and the user has the ability to restore them up until 8 a.m. on a Sunday or whenever you choose, in which case then the project and all related documents will be deleted. So I hope you found this video of interest. It's a little bit more complicated than most of my others, uh, but it is it's something that comes up quite a bit. And um, so, yeah, if you enjoyed that, uh, thumbs up would be great, and I'll catch you on the next one.